Virtually all experts agree these monolithic forms were intended as timeless tombs for the pharaohs, monuments to their immortality. More than two million stones, some weighing 30 tons, had been cut and placed in geometric perfection in a building never matched in size until this century. The Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, the Towers of Dubai, they all pale in comparison to the archaeology and the mystery of the Great Pyramid. But the question is, who built the Great Pyramid? Who was its designer? Was it aliens? Was it giants? Here at the Soul Trap, we suggest that it may have been Enoch. Come with us on a brief but interesting journey as we discuss Enoch, the Pyramid, and the coming of the Lord. Could it be that two of the strangest characters in antiquity are actually united in architecture? Could it be that the mysterious architecture of the pyramid is somehow deeply related to the mysterious architect of Enoch? In one of the better books on the subject, a book called The Stargate Conspiracy, the author discusses how that the pyramid pushes and stretches the very fabric of our understanding of technology, history, and the intersection of both. There are numerous theories about who the builders of the Great Pyramid were. One theory is that it was, in fact, the Egyptians, that somehow with pulleys and possibly water and willpower and time, they were able to produce such technology and such a technologically advanced building along with all of its technologically advanced measurements and all of its technologically advanced intricacies. Then there are those that believe that they were built by aliens. Aliens coming down and even directly or indirectly had a part in building the pyramid. We can also include giants into this. We know that giants, according to the book of Genesis, were here. Giants may have played a role in this ancient archaeology. But what if these three great pyramids, along with possibly even the Sphinx, were pre-flood architecture that survived. If the pyramids were built before the flood, who indeed was the architect? Some believe that the architect was Enoch, and that just as Enoch will once again play a role in the end time, so likewise the pyramid may play a role in the end time. At least that's what David J. Jordan believes in a great little article that he wrote called Enoch Designed the Great Pyramid. Jordan writes, The Great Pyramid at Giza was not designed by Pharaoh, but by Enoch, the man who quote-unquote walked with God. Egyptian laborers were used, but the intelligence in the exact design came from the designer of the universe. And that's what was passed on to Enoch, and Enoch passed on to the builders of the Great Pyramid. It was not a mere burial tomb for a dead Pharaoh but was meant to show in stone the timeline of mankind until the second coming of the King of Kings. This is why it incorporates the dimensions of the earth, moon, and the template of life called the golden section. That is an interesting fact. Of all that the past world has offered by way of grand imagination, Atlantis, the Hanging Gardens, only this has survived. I not only survived, but become a major part of pop culture, Masonic culture, occult culture, and even political and geopolitical culture. Jordan claims it was preserved as a witness to God's greatness, to his design and timing until the end. None of the others have been preserved and remain, only the great pyramid of the Lord. And it is because Enoch was the master builder that the Great Pyramid in ancient times was called Enoch's Pillar. Some have claimed that the Pillar of Enoch, the, the Pyramid, can even be seen on Mars. There have been debates and debunks about the supposed structure on Mars. I myself tend to think that they are not structures because I'm not convinced of the nature of the planets as we have been led to believe. I certainly am not for sure that they are solid, nor that they are in nature as we are told, but supposing that they are, 
The pictures are very, very compelling, as you can see, even though they have been supposedly debunked. But there is something powerful, global, and even universal. The layout, the concept of the pyramid, even to the point that it may be the design, some believe, of the New Jerusalem, and even possibly give us the design and nature of the universe itself. Jordan states, if you study pyramidology, you will soon discover that an inch equals a year in time by theory. And that theory accurately and precisely parallels the exact history of the earth when you add up all the 500 feet of both its height and its passageways. Why? Because 500 feet equals 6,000 inches, which equals 6,000 years. And Enoch stated very precisely that there was going to be 7,000 years before the earth was renewed. And when you take away the 1,000 years for the Lord's millennial rule before the new heaven and new earth and descent of New Jerusalem to the earth, then that leaves us with a 6,000-year rule of man. But in case you still don't believe it after what you have studied and researched so far, do notice that as you proceed in time down the ascending passageway of the Great Pyramid to the flood of Noah and upward to Christ and to the star to the Grand Gallery, and then on to the great step, you pass through what is called the anteroom. And what is the dimension of this room? Before you enter into the king's chamber, the circular circumference touching the earth's side and floor, well, it's 365.24 inches. 365.24 inches. And when you change this revolution in inches into time, you get 365 years which is the exact length of Enoch's life while here on earth. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And when you convert every inch into a day, you get 365.24 days, which is the exact number of days it takes the earth to travel around the sun. Or for you flat earthers, for the sun to travel the circular plane of the earth. Maybe the earth circles the sun, maybe the sun follows the circuit around the plane of the earth. We may never know this side of heaven exactly what the pyramid was intended for and who built it, yet... It is clear from the Bible that Enoch and the, quote, altar in Egypt still have a role to play in the affairs of prophecy and men. The question is, are they connected? Maybe. I am excited about seeing both unfold in history. Absolutely. And I feel as if we are drawing closer and closer to that time when all of these prophetic things are going to come to bear. So, as you read the book, The Stargate, or as you read the article by Dr. Jordan, or as you simply mull over the sites of the beautiful archaeology of the Great Pyramid, I ask you the question, the Pyramid and Enoch, is there a connection? The Pyramid and the coming of the Lord, is there a connection? I tend to think so, and I hope so. As John said in the book of Revelation, even so, come Lord Jesus. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Britain! What? The Electric City!